Hey everybody, Riot Mort here, and we are here with the first patch of Inkborn Fables, patch 14.7 rundown. So we had a pretty good launch. We're pretty happy with the state of things, but uh, the set's definitely not perfect. There are definitely things we can change. And so there's going to be pretty, it's a pretty big patch actually. There's a lot of like small system changes and things like that. So rather than beat around the bush, let's just jump right in and see what we have in store. All right, first up, uh, a fun surprise. One of the things we thought that was kind of uh, annoying was that if you ever got the Wandering Trainer portal, you couldn't get the Wandering Trainer augment. And we were like, that's kind of less fun. And so we were talking about it and we were like, what if instead of one of them being dummies, they were sentinels? And Kent was like, I'm down. And Kent made it happen and it was great. So there's two new portals this time. Replacing Wandering Trainers is now replaced with Trainer Sentinels. And wandering, ventinals, vent, wand, ugh, wandering Vendors is replaced with Vendor Sentinels. And instead of a dummy, you get a Sentinel. Uh, they have, you know, they can attack. They have a spell that's just one really hard attack. But it's kind of cool because they can benefit from their traits. Like you see the Sniper one here and the Sniper Sentinel will have plus one range. And it's pretty fun. Uh, and that allows you to get the Wandering Trainer Augment with the Trainer Sentinel, Sentinel Portal, which is pretty fun. Um, so two new portals you can try out. They're pretty neat. Give them a try. Uh, it allows for escort quest also to be offered as well. So yeah, new portals. Sweet. All right. In the loot system, the prismatic orbs have landed pretty well so far. Just trying to get the balance hundred percent right here. So in stage two, the masterwork upgrade was a little too good. So that can no longer drop from a stage two prismatic orb. Uh, and in the stage three prismatic orb, it used to drop with five gold. Now it just drops by itself. Still one of the strongest drops you can get, but should make it more in line with everything else in the orb. And then the stage two prismatic orb that drops two component anvils plus 3G gets one more gold. Woohoo! So, all right, three star four costs. Three star four costs are something we definitely want to be strong, not necessarily 100% win rate, but across the board, they were just a little lower than we wanted them to. Uh, and so for those who don't know, three star four costs actually have a flat bonus 500 health on top of everything else. Um, but if you didn't know that, now they have a thousand. So you just get a free thousand health if you three star your four cost, which is pretty cool. So three star four cost should generally be a little bit stronger this patch. Uh, nothing too crazy. Yeah, I said it. Uh, and then hyper roll. Hyper roll got a bit of an adjustment. Uh, hyper roll was a little bit too much of, you know, go to nine, use all that gold and hit a three star four cost. So we're changing it a little bit. There'll be one more combat round in stage seven. So if you want to play a three cost reroll, that should help that be viable. Uh, stage seven gold gets nerfed a little bit because there's an extra round. And then stage eight and nine gold get hit pretty hard. Again, three star four cost was just a little too common. Actually, it's a lot too common. Uh, so the gold goes down from 1911.11 to 15.77. And 14.11.11 to 15.77, although that 15 should be green, but you get the idea. So a little less gold in the end game of Hyper Roll should open up more options than just three star four cost. Finally, encounters. This should be some good news for people. Uh, the following encounters will be seen less often. Set Carousel. Uh, Bard opening, Lilia opening, Cho'Gath slot trade, and Recon Recombobulate. These were all weighted a little higher. Uh, some cases are set a lot higher. Uh, those are now set to normal numbers. Should be fine. Uh, even when they do show up, we lowered the amount of time carousel encounters like Set, Sivir, and Tristana take. Sweet. Like, if you've been watching my stream all weekend, we have not seen Set all weekend. It's been kind of nice. Uh, Aatrox, the one that gives gold XP health. We've nerfed the gold just a little bit from 10 to 8. Uh, the Alune one that used to buff two, three, or four cost units of your choice, the two cost part got nerfed, uh, and the four cost part got buffed. So it should be a little more tight of a choice and not necessarily just grats on the two cost players. Uh, the Aurelia one that lets everyone run on the carousel for free, we upped the delay before everyone is free to give you a little bit more time to think about what you're trying to pick and go after. Um, so that one will be there. Tom Kench, item or component. Um, sorry, gold or component, uh, used to be 10 gold, is now 8 gold. The Teemo win or lose prediction, if you could predict win correctly, 14 gold was a big swing. That's been nerfed to 10 gold. Wukong 6 Radiant Items now excludes Rascal Gloves. 
And then set squatting, you're not going to be quite as big anymore. Instead of 140% bigger, it's just 70% bigger. So maybe not quite insane. So set basically got triple nerfed here. So if you've been complaining about the set encounter, we got you. We got you. All right, on the trait side, uh, Ultraist, a little bit too good of a splash. How many times am I going to say a little bit? Take a drink. Um, also, that should be red. Man, I'm bad at this. Uh, Ultraist is getting nerfed uh, at 3 and 4, so less armor and MR. Uh, Arcanist is getting buffed at 4 and 6, 5 AP, small buff. Uh, Artist can now copy non-champions quicker. Your move, Leduck. Fortune. Uh, so 7 Fortune is a very powerful uh, trait that you can get pretty early. Uh, it kind of feeds itself into 9 Fortune a little too easily, though. And it's just... It was too much of an easy win for how easy it was to hit on, like, Wandering Trainer Portals. So the 7-piece luck bonus has been nerfed from 30 to 25, which means it shouldn't self-feed itself over and over. The 7 Fortune Orbs have also been lowered their value a little bit. And then there was a cash out that would give you a, a set two plus two dummies with two Radiant Warmogs. Uh, we've also added a Radiant Bloodthirster to that cash out, so it'll be better. You can put the Radiant Bloodthirster on that set, and he'll be lifting and cranking and doing good stuff. Cool. Uh, Ghostly. Ghostly took off about day six of the patch. Uh, definitely freaked out a lot of people in like EU, and has definitely taken off as one of the easier-to-play comps. Uh, so the trait is being nerfed. Uh, it's going down from 12, 20, 35 to 10, 6, 32 at 4, 6, and 8, respectively. 8 gets the smallest nerf. We do want 8 to be like, sweet, you hit 8 ghostly, you win, or at least you do well. Uh, but 4 and 6 getting hit pretty hard should hurt them in the mid game. Uh, Heavenly, this trait was really reliant on Wukong, and frankly, probably still will be. Uh, but that Wukong attack speed bonus was pretty insane. That gets nerfed a bit, but the emblem, which was like fake, uh, oh wow, 4% Omnivamp has now been doubled, so that should help the Heavenly Emblem be a bit better. And then finally, Reaper. We've seen a lot of success with like Yone builds and things like that, so Reaper gets its 4 bleed nerfed a small amount. Shouldn't change much. I think Yone is going to be one of the better comps this patch. We'll see. All right, Ink Shadow. This is probably one of the ma more major changes, but the big thing here is Ink Shadow 7 goes from 10% damage amp and reduction to 20%. So Ink Shadow 7 should be a lot better from what we've tested on PvE. It seems a lot better. And in addition, Ink Shadow items are going to be better as well. Pretty much all of them but one needed some small buffs, even at like 3 Ink Shadow. This might surprise some people who were like, Bombardment was great or good, they'll be even better. Um, but they're all getting some of their base stats increased. Bombardment, 5% more AD and AS. Uh, Tattoo of Force, 5 more armor and MR. Fury, 5% more AS. Tattoo of Toxin uh, goes up from 33% to 44%. That's probably one of the bigger buffs. And then Tattoo of Vitality gets its HP uh, and damage uh, buffed as well. So those should all be better. And then Story Weaver. There's a lot of text here, but let me break it down. to The, the short version is... Blue Kale good, Kale 3 worse. That's the short version. The longer version is the blue version now works properly and does big damage. Uh, the five piece now gives it 50% more spell damage. So that hits a lot harder. The seven piece also gives 20% damage amp. So in our testing, we found that red and blue are now pretty equal, actually. Blue really good at taking down strong frontliners. Red can ramp up and do more DPS. And then the three-piece red bonus, the attack speed bonus, has been nerfed from 15 to 12. The sun, the green KL3 has also been nerfed from 30 to 20% Sunder and Shred. It won't replace Last Whisper and Static Shiv for you anymore. Uh, it'll still be 20%, but it has been nerfed. Uh, three-story Weaver Kale on hit damage goes down. Three-story Weaver Kale ability goes down. So again, three-story Weaver kind of getting nerfed. It's just such a good early game. And then five and seven specifically nerfed only on stage four. Uh, that's it. Stage five and six, they'll be fine. Uh, stage two and three, no change. Just stage four, small nerf to five and seven. So like I said, TLDR, blue kale playable, little worse at three. There you go. All right, on the champion side, Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix reroll, not really a thing. 
Uh, when you saw Reaper get nerfed a bit as well, but Kha'Zix, we want to be better early game choice. Uh, so he gets some more ability AD ratio into his ability. Uh, Koboko, fun champion, kind of underperforming. Uh, his spell will now hit harder based on his max HP. This should make both him and his hero augment better. Cool. Uh, Kogma. Kogma, we're actually pretty fine with his damage, but man, he can get to your backline quick, right? Blue buff Shoujin, and he's hitting your backliners 12 seconds into a fight. We are lowering how many ability casts he has to do, or raising it, I suppose, uh, so that it's going to take him longer to hit that backline. He's going to be stuck on frontline a little longer before he gets that plus one range. But the damage isn't changed, so hopefully Kogma reroll should be viable, but less frustrating. Uh, Sivir, the ability lasts a little less time. This is meant to be a bit of a nerf to Storyweaver and Trickshot. Sivir should be okay. Uh, it still lasts a decent amount, so it should be fine. And then Yasuo. Whew. Yasuo the one cost. Give him three gargoyles and watch him tank forever because his ability scaling off armor and MR was a was a choice uh so we're that's getting hit pretty hard here so like an itemless yasuo not going to be hit too hard but he won't be so insane with multiple gargoyles so that armor and mr are going to go down uh yasuo shouldn't be better than thresh now <laughs> is the hope um but still should be good in the early game with like a single gargoyle stuff like that there you go uh kindred kindred just gets buffed again reaper got nerfed but kindred gets buffed should help Dryad, should help Faded play something other than Aphelios uh, if you want to play Kindred. So pretty sizable buff there. Cool. Uh, Lux, same thing. Arcanist kind of suffering, Porcelain kind of suffering. So small buff for Lux's spell. Should hit harder. Kiana, more ability AD ratio. Cool. Kiana hits a little harder. Something, something, Heavenly, three buffs, something, go count buffs. Do what you got to do. Uh, Shen. Shen 3 was nutty i really don't know why this spike so hard honestly shen 3 will still be nutty but going from 50 to 90 damage reduction that scales off ap was an insane so shen 3 getting hit i'm um, going down and then this change is actually meant to buff his hero augment this will make his hero augment quite a bit better a little nervous about that we'll see but shen is no longer monolocked if he uses all three empowered attacks before his ability duration expires meaning if you're sitting in the back line with that augment and you're going one two three but four seconds haven't passed you can get back to generating mana and so that shen will be able to do that spell more often that should buff the hero augment it's meant to be a quality of life change for the hero augment for shen so cool uh bard Definitely the uh, low elo stomper for sure. First week, he dominated pretty hard. If you saw a Ginsu's Ginsu's Gunblade Bard 3, you had to immediately go to Twitter and tag me about it. So obviously, I got a lot of tags. Um, Bard is getting his attack speed lowered, so he'll be weaker for sure. We'll see if he can survive. Um, my worry is he's a little too weak now. We'll see. Um, but I definitely don't expect Bard to be S tier, that's for sure. Uh, Diana gets a buff. Uh, Diana's spell takes a long time to cast. We want her to be an effective frontliner, so 20 off her spell. Cool. Uh, Heavenly, quadruple buffed now, so if you're keeping score and you like to count buffs, Heavenly is officially S++ tier. Uh, Soraka doing a tiny bit more damage. Cool. Uh, Thresh, the faded armor and MR bonus, definitely one of the best choices. G giving your whole team, you know, seven faded, you were getting 60 armor and MR. That gets nerfed. And then Thresh had this really gross thing where it's like his bonus gives him armor and MR, and then he shares that armor and MR with somebody else, and it just cycled. So his ability is going to share less of his armor and MR. So Thresh getting nerfed as well. Our hope is that maybe other faded choices than Thresh set and Thresh Yasuo will be choosable. That's the hope. So, But Thresh should still be strong. Tristana gets an AD ability buff. Um, my read is that duelists are going to be very strong. Volibear, Tristana, reroll, duelist. I expect to be very good. So Tristana, enjoy your buff. Uh, four costs. Four costs definitely seem like the area that was suffering the most. Uh, so Ash gets a 5 AD buff. My read is it'll help her, but still not going to be like S tier. Kaisa gets a 5 AD buff. This one's scary, especially with the Ink Shadow stuff. I expect Kaisa to be very good next patch. Uh, Morgana gets a small buff. Should help a bit. Kind of makes up for Ghostly and lets Morgana be played. 
Uh, Huey, Huey, definitely one of the best endgame champions, gets a 10% damage nerf and a 20% healing nerf. And the dirty secret is he's probably still very good. We didn't want to over nerf in one swing. This is a big nerf to Huey. But hopefully uh, it makes Huey not necessarily the always endgame champion. And then Zaya and Rakan. Zaya gets five more AD. Some of you might be going, hey, that's not going to be enough to buff her. And you might be right. We'll see. There's also a bug fix with her that will help her as well. Um, but we definitely want Zaya to be sort of the capstone AD trick shot build. We'll see how she does. She can do a lot of damage now, and the bug fix does help out quite a bit. All right. Small thing here, but uh, champs have had their classes changed. What this really affects is lucky gloves and recommended items. Uh, so Aphelios goes from attack caster to attack carry. Azir, Hue, Janna, Lissandra, Lux, and Zyra go from Magic Caster to uh, Magic Caster High Mana. Basically, the only difference here is no blue buff in their Lucky Gloves. It'll be Shojin, so that should help. Kindred goes from Magic Carry to Magic Caster. Kogma, that means they get the blue buff. And then Yone goes to Attack Fighter. So again, small recommendations, mostly affects their Lucky Gloves output. Cool. Items. Gargoyle Stoneplate has become the de facto build item, probably the most built item in the game right now. Uh, compared to, you know, Gargoyle, or excuse me, to Bramble and Dragon Claw, just not good enough. Uh, so it's base armor and MR is being lowered by five. Uh, Hextech Gunblade, little too much healing from that item. Uh, the Omnivamp is going to go from 22% to 20%. Ionic Spark loses 50 health, very good item. Morella Nomicon loses 5% attack speed. And then Sterix Gauge, this should be green. I'm just red, green, colorblind. Uh, Sterix Gauge is getting buffed to 25% HP gain. That item should be better. On the support side, Aegis of the Legion. Man, if you got two or three of these things, you pretty much won the game. It was like Kent snuck in the rushdown augment. 90% uh, attack speed was kind of bonkers. Uh, so the attack speed from Aegis of the Legion is being nerfed to 25%. And then Zerat Portal is also being nerfed. The attack speed goes down. The armor and MR goes up. And then no longer scales base AD with stage. Instead uses star level. Now stars up to two star on stage four and three star on stage five plus. And you can see here the AD values. Basically it goes 80, 80, 173, 225 to 80, 80, 120, 180. Now you look at these changes. These will make the heavenly uh, fine vintage comp worse. It won't be so much of an easy win, but we don't want to eliminate the comp. We actually like that this comp exists. It's a very fun comp. We're hoping these are enough to keep it in the meta, but not ruin it. Um, we'll just go from there. But the Zerat portals were kind of needed here. Uh, Radiant items also got a pass. Uh, Covalent Spark loses some health and zap damage. Crest of Cinders loses some burn damage. Gargoyle Stoneplate loses some flat armor and MR and some health regen. Fists of Fairness gets some AD and AP and some crit chance. That should make that item a lot better. Legacy of the Colossus gains more damage reduction and empowered damage reduction. More Morella Nomicon also goes down to a 2% burn. Spear of Hirana gains 5 AD and AP as well as 5 mana. And then Sterix Mega Shield gains some HP and some AD. So again, trying to balance the Radiant items a little better uh, so that things like Morella Nomicon aren't just like the insta picks that they were before. Cool. And then we have Augments. Uh, Fine Vintage gets nerfed in that it no longer counts PvE rounds, so you don't have the weird APM of trying to slam items as fast as you can. Other than that, still the same Augment. Good for Something 1 gets buffed to 40% gold drop chance. Cool. Uh, Sticks and Stones is disabled, or at least it's supposed to be. From my PvE testing, this might not be true. Uh, if it ends up not being true, oops. But it was meant to be disabled. Cool. On the prismatic side, and you're going to see a lot of these changes, by the way, but we went through and like some of the trait-specific augments that needed buffed get better champions now, and some that needed nerfed get worse. So I'm going to go through these real quick here. Arcanist Crown goes from Lux to Zoe. That's meant to be a buff. Uh, Fortune Crown goes from Sunfire and Teemo to Giant Slayer and Tristana. Makes it much easier to play, as you can just get a Kobuko and be good to go. Uh, Ghostly Crown goes from Bramble and Chen to Gargoyle and Alawi. Sage Crown goes from Zyra to Diana. Sniper Crown goes from Senna to Aphelios. Warden Crown goes from Nar to Amumu. Again, all of those meant to be buffs. 
On the nerf side, Storyweaver Crown goes from Gargoyle and Riven to Protectors Vow and Garen. Again, meant to be a nerf. It's supposed to be. Other prismatic augments. At what cost has been temporarily disabled? Funny story here. We had a nerf for it because early data was showing it too strong before our loc changes. Then the data showed it was actually low elo good and high elo terrible. Uh, so basically in order to get it, we didn't want to ship a nerf to an augment that's bad. So we're just going to disable it for now. It'll be back next patch at the proper balance. Build a bud ended up a little weak, so it gets more gold. And then two for one, one of the best two one augments in the game right now, probably close to the best. Uh, we're now only going to offer it on three, two. That should be a bit of a nerf. If it's still too strong at three, two, we'll change it and go from there. But this felt like the correct nerf for now. Um, so you have to wait until 3-2 to consider taking it. All right, gold. We have two pages of gold augments. Again, going to run through these fast. Arcanist Crest, buffed from Lux to Zoe. Behemoth Crest, buffed from Malphite to Thresh. Bruiser Crest, buffed from Aatrox to Tom Kench. Call to Adventure, buffed from Garen and Sivir to Garen and Riven. Dragonlord Crest, buffed from Janna to Diana. Uh, Enter the Dragon, buffed from Janna to Janna and Diana. That's a big buff for that augment. Uh, Fortune Crest, buffed from Timo to Tristana. Haunted House, buffed from Caitlyn and Shen to Aatrox and Riven. That's also a Aatrox and Riven. I think that's Aatrox and Shen. That might be a typo. Uh, Mind Over Matter, buffed from uh, Ari to Zoe. Porcelain Crest, buffed from, buffed from Lux to Amumu. Raid Boss, buffed from Cho and Malphite to Malphite and Yorick. So a lot of champion buffs there. And then going back on the other things here, we have uh, new hero augments. So you'll notice Drop Blossom, Ethereal Blades, and Midnight Siphon now have a plus version. The plus version, if it shows up at 3-2, will give you the two-star champion already. So Drop Blossom on 2-1 gives you a Nico. Drop Blossom plus on 3-2 gives you a two-star Nico. Pretty cool. Might tempt you into playing those a little more. Uh, Midnight Siphon also got a buff from 20 to 25%, so that augment should be better. Dynamic Duo goes from 10 to 15 gold. Uh, everything must go re-enabled. This is the one that says everything in your shop buys and sells for zero gold. I'm curious to see how this one does in the live meta, but this augment's back. The bugs have been fixed. We'll see. So that'll be an interesting one. Uh, and then reinforcements, also a little weak, gets four more gold. So sadly, loses the joke here with reinforcement giving four gold, but we'll just say it gives you four gold twice. So... Yeah. All right, that's page one. On page two, Sage Crest buffed from Zyra to Diana. Sniper Crest buffed from Senna to Aphelios. Spirit Guardians nerfed from Garen and Jax to Nar and Amumu. That's a big buff. Uh, Warden Crest buffed from Nar to Amumu. And Well Fed buffed from Kobuko and Rek'Sai to Kobuko and Aatrox. Again, same kind of pattern. Scoreboard, uh, scrapper, scoreboard Scrapper is uh, no longer offered on 3-2. Won't bait you into the late game. Uh, Garen's Hero Augment gets buffed to do 10% more true damage. Cool. Storyweaver Crest gets nerfed because plus one Storyweaver is very good. Now you don't get a ribbon. Uh, Vulnerable Piggy Bank. This Augment finally gets buffed the way it's supposed to. Now you'll get two gold instead of one XP from Exalted. Uh, so if you can play this, I think it's a pretty fun Augment. Yeah. And then finally, bug fixes. Two pages of bug fixes. Here we go. Uh, simplified Amumu's ability tooltip, so it's easier to understand. Call to Chaos now no longer says the wrong number for Zeke's and Locket dummies. Uh, so no more getting spammed about that. Uh, gold subscription now properly says it gives you gold every stage in standard and double up. Fielding multiple units with tactician's crowns no longer causes some units to lose traits when fighting on away boards. Uh, the faded bond now vanishes when one of the bonded units dies. Quicksilver no longer blocks Zephyr. Toma Power's damage amp now works on five Story Weaver. Fortune now correctly grants the highest tier of cash out if you have enough luck. Uh, if you were wondering, nobody's been able to get the three star five cost or the mystery gift because it just didn't work. That's fixed. Crown Guarded now properly works. Scuttle Puddle and Crab Rave now correctly replace the Stage 10 Rift Herald in Hyper Roll. Boiling Point is now correctly available to be offered when you have the Porcelain trait active instead of when you have the Dragon Lord trait active. Oops. Stand United now clarifies that only non-unique traits count towards its bonus. It's going to be epic is now correctly available to be offered when you have the mythic trait active instead of when you have two or more mythic units in play. 
Lucky Ricochet's description now correctly states that it grants a Sivir and a Teemo. Lissandra puts Tibbers into a pot. Tibbers will no longer come out as an Annie riding another Annie's shoulders. That's a great one. Fine Vintage will no longer be offered when the player has Slammin. Uh, fix some issues with the Fortune Tree. Volibear will uh, keep his current attack target after casting a spell instead of randomly searching for another target in range. Kale will now properly gain extra stage stats in stage 6+. So very small buff to late, late, late game story weaver. Uh, Unified resistance will now show its visual effect during planning phase and not during combat phase. Story weaver augments are now correctly available to be offered when you have the story weaver trait active instead of when you have two or more. Caretakers chosen now correctly grants its early rewards if you take it a higher level. Zaya's ability no longer sometimes fails to ricochet with trick shot active. Udir no longer permanently grabs units if they're CC immune. And Udir's Ram Slam now ability correctly deals damage if he grabs a CC immune target. So there you go. Lots of changes, lots of stuff, lots of buffs and nerfs and bug fixes. It's a big patch. Hopefully it doesn't swing things too crazy, but you never know. Uh, TFT is a, a fragile game sometimes. So that is it for our first patch. This will be live on Wednesday. Um, so look forward to that. And there you go. One patch down, many, many to go for Inkborn Fables. It'll be great. All right. That's going to do it for me. Until next time, take it easy.